I want to live in the spirit world. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Iroh's back. Yay! And then, then not General Iroh, the other Iroh. Yeah, boy, they, they really like that name, don't they? <laughs> and they like various voice actors playing Iroh. I'm sorry, I just gotta do it again. Squee! <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Yeah. <laughs> god, that was... I want to live in the spirit world. <laughs> it's just so. I I love the way. Yeah, where was this Cora all along? Yeah, like, I, I, this was I, more in this the past three episodes have been more interesting than all of the episodes we have leading yeah, up to it. Yeah, I mean it's. I get you could make the argument that because you know we spent so much time in you know the sort of dark, harsh you know real world that when you go into the spirit world it is much more welcoming and oh it feels so warm. But I don't know. I we already did that in season one. <laughs> You didn't really go in the spirit world in season one, though. No, but I mean, you could have watched season one and been like, okay, uh, the world's you know, kind of dark. Or, you know, or maybe and... like, well, like I said, maybe even sort of, with, with that first, uh, um, with the backstory of uh, of the first Avatar, I mean, again, you could have spread that out a bit, get a little bit more balance. You, it's still what worked when we go in the spirit world here. Um, so I'm 90% sure, I haven't checked the credits, but I'm almost 90% sure that's TMS animation, which is like one of my favorite animation. Man, companies. it sure looked like it yeah. to me. Oh, God, what's yeah, About it? five minutes in, I was like, did we switch animation? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I adore that company. I think they do such good work. And, and man, what a perfect episode to bring them in on. Oh, the I, ending with that just... CGI transition from Korra to the tree with Klaatu, Vatu, Nikto. Yeah, whatever, whatever it's called. <laughs> um... I, I love the way this world works. I love how something can be near and far and you can bring it closer. It runs solely on emotion. I like... And remember, if you look for darkness, you will find it. Was that what he said? Something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, it was like he had some line about, like, you know, you bring what... You, it's like Lothlorien. You're bringing what you bring with you. So if you bring darkness, <laughs> if you look for darkness... You're gonna get darkness. Well, and I like I like worlds like that, and I like sort of realities and ideas like that because I think there is so much truth to, truth to that in our reality too. That so much of what you have to put up with is what you carry with you, and so I like that when she. Well, I like the fact she transforms into a child. I thought that was really cool. I, again, just gives an idea how this world works. Yeah, when uh, Howl's moving castle there for like a minute, like yeah, kind of like transforms. He's like younger self, and then. She restores part of herself. I really so like that. Herself. Oh. I, I did too. I for a second I thought, oh, this could be insufferable, but I'm like, okay, no, I actually did it right. It's okay. Yeah, and I like that she had to resort back to this. I mean, and that is the truth of the character. She's very emotionally simple and frustrated, and so, so it makes sense that in this world she would be, you know, transformed into a child, so it has to grow up for like a better term. It's, I mean, it. I guess in some ways you could say it's kind of insulting for the character because a lot of people would say that anyway, but it. It's still worse because it's still addressing these very simple truths that even so many adults don't get. So I think it's still very powerful when you have well, to Well, it's hear a giant metaphor. I mean, I laugh yeah. when it's just like, you know, I am, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And, you know, like, you don't like, you know, you just look scary. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try that with a uh, Bengal tiger. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just going to walk up to, like, I'm going to hop in a cage and zoom but, but and, you, and you go know to the I, idea. You know, but it's a metaphor, so it works. Yeah. But um, I always laugh at that because I was like, I'm just waiting for it to walk up to the wrong thing and be like, you're really pretty on the inside. And then it mauls. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's a metaphor. Yeah, that's the idea of balance is that yeah. it's not black and white. It's how you perceive it, and and I like that. I like <laughs> I like I, I like the little the weird little tea party. Of course, seeing Iro there is great. It's your unbirthday too. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can think of. It's like is Iro throwing a Marian birthday party? <laughs> the oh god, well, when they went back into the uh, library, both of us just went, oh no, oh, no, yeah, <laughs> it's the great library and. Grandpa Aang told me this, and we were just like, oh no, oh no, oh, no, 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 oh no, oh no, don't go in there, oh no, this is a mistake. And, and then when you see the owl, that's great, it's, it's, I love that voice. <laughs> the last person who is here, cut to the God, skeleton. that was, was dark. I mean, it's like, you know awesome. the guy, you know the guy stays there. That was so you think, awesome. Like, maybe, you know, you kind of assume the worst, but maybe they made a deal, maybe he was like, nope, there's just the fucking skeleton. It's like, shit. Well, <laughs> that's the thing that I think by by upping the ante on this show, but you can get away with that in this show versus the original Avatar. Like, yeah. I, I loved that scene. I just burst out laughing. It was like, But, nice. but it still had, again, it felt so much like sort of the, the, the first three seasons again with like that great sense of humor about like how the radio fit. works. False but... information about little men in a box. Yeah, and, and then <laughs> the dog's like, going, 
walking away. I mean, it's that sense of humor, but also that sense of like just real, real imagination, real creativity. Oh my real god! Sort of and, wonder uh, and charm, so charming. This I world. forget what the dragon, but the. Uh, fluffy footer, you know, Fluffernutter. I'm uh, calling him fl Fluffernutter. Fluffy foot, oh, I think was it. Fluffernutter. What a bitch. <laughs> well, asshole. <laughs> yeah, betrayed her. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ooh, bastard. <laughs> and I, I like, I like stuff like I like when she returns the whatever that, that uh, phoenix or dragonbird, whatever that was, returns it to the nest and it all transforms into one. I mean, it's like yeah, it's, that was pretty cool. It, it's this strange kind. Well, it was of, a metaphor. It was the phoenix. She becomes yeah. all again, and, and, and I. <sighs> Then kind of has one of those like naked gun thirty three and the third head slapping moments like shh, shh. <laughs> like it's like open the portal or I will take her soul okay and I was just like uh, yeah like... it's uh, on the other hand on the one hand it's sort of like I do sort of go what would I do in that situation but it is sort of like okay so. We haven't seen this yet. Korra messes up everything and somebody comes the and problem, saves her. The problem, the like, problem, uh, like, I'm like, yeah, I would want to save Jinora, but at the same time, I'm like, you can't trust that guy. I just know he was going to just screw you. Like, we well, does, so, and if you're the only one. Does he, let, he does technically let her go, right? And then, like, doesn't a spirit take her away or something? Or no, no, only no, because the evil he's spirit busy trying to kill Korra. Yeah. Like, uh, that's, and, but what kills me is, like, she gets lucky because stuck, the yeah. phoenix drags her out of there, but I'm kind of looking at it, was like, well, good job, phoenix, why didn't you just grab Jinora? Like, when Yeah, Jenna's, why didn't you grab, uh, Tarlock 2.0 and, and take yeah. him out, too? I am, uh, I am gonna say this, um, this is still the weak part of the show for me. I mean, he's got Jinora. He's giving her an impossible choice. He's like, he's really badass. And when he shows up at the library, he's kind of badass. But I just feel nothing for this. I have no connection with Tarlock. Well, we, uh, uh Tarlock, not, 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 or Unalak. Well, but the that's, that's the problem. With Unalak, yeah. I mean, it, we, we've seen him before, and it's the first one light. Why do we want to see that? Well, again? and part of the problem is at least Tarlock in the first season was sort of there and established, and he had a steady presence, and then he gets taken out, but he comes back at the end. You know, he's only well, and, out well, for and, a and couple he, episodes. Well, and, he, and he's given death. We know what he wants to do. We don't even really know why this yeah. guy is helping the spirit, which maybe they'll reveal. Unalak is in the beginning and vanishes. We have no connection with this guy. It's like, yeah, tried to frame the father, you know, this and that. Korra resolves that issue, and then he's just in the background. Like, doing nothing until he just shows up again spontaneously. Wait, and I'm just like, there's this, I have no connection with this guy. No, no, Amon we, was a way better villain. No, that would be fine, because Amon disappears too. If they gave but him there's much a more presence. Yeah, yeah, there's no there's presence, presence to this to character. Amon. Uh, there's no presence to uh, this He just kind of shows up and be like, I'm a dick. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of generic jerk villain, and... I find Varric more fun to watch. Yeah, like, well, obviously, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, just as a character, I'm like more, I am more interested trying to figure out what Varric's deal is than Unalak's. At this point, I'm <laughs> almost at a point where I'm just like, you know what, Vatu's the scarier guy, you know, the scarier spirit, and Varric's way more interesting as a character. I don't even give a crap about Unalak anymore. As far as I'm concerned, he's just a pawn of Vatu. Would have, would have made sense if Varric was actually, like, the guy who was, like, bringing back the evil spirit, because you're like, he's just kind of nutty, and whatever reason he would have, you just kind of buy it. be insane. He's like, I like chaos. I like something. Yeah, he could be, like, the Joker. Maybe, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it actually could make sense. Like, this other guy, it's like, he's kind of logical. He, you know, he has, like, grand plan, but he's, like, just not that interesting. I mean, we don't know what the grand plan is either, so I agree. I, I think he's a dull, he's a dull villain. Um, but yeah, I, I loved being in the spirit world still. I, I love the progression of the Korra character. I would have liked to see something a little bit more come of that, uh, of that climax, but it's Still got a few episodes left, and she can redeem herself. It, and I, it I, fascinates I did, me. I did feel bad uh, last night. I did feel really bad when she says, "I'm sorry," and you know, why is my little girl waking up? And I, I did. Oh, that was a great scene. That was like chilling. Yeah, I, I like, mean, oh. that actually is sort of like a chilling scene. And I, I found, I was like, okay, that that does still work. So it's it's just sort of following on the I heels of that. I have a much that, better grasp of, of her Cora messing up as and a, being saved. And here's the thing: I have a much better grasp of Cora as a character now after three episodes than I did in all the lead up into this. And even through some of the first season, 
Which I'm sorry is a problem. I'm like, you were able to do this in three episodes and you've been sitting on it this whole time and boring me with, you know, just the back again forward and I was like kicking desks and, you know. I see, like, I've seen much more emotion, I've seen much more intrigue in that character just in that last frame they have of her looking at Tenson, that one yeah. beautifully drawn image of her, you know, just Why like couldn't you terrified and afraid and just looking for an answer and can't find it. And it's like, just in a look. And, yeah, to me, they just have not been captured that throughout. Well, with the exception of the last one and the one before, you know, obviously yeah. there's one. I mean, there I mean were, in my opinion, they were dropping hints of that in the first season. I didn't like the way the first season resolved itself where it gave everything back instantly, mm -hmm. but she had terror, she had to work through things, and I felt like... And she had she to do was, that here, too! In yeah, the spirit world, yeah. she didn't have her power, so she had to use uh, logical emotion. So we're going back to where we were, sort of, in the first season with what she's working through, but that's part of my problem, though, is I feel like, well, we're nearly done with, or we're somewhere we're in the last close, third yeah. of the the second season, and we're going back to hitting points we already hit in the first season, and it's fun to watch, and I got a better grasp of Korra now, but, like, what were we doing for the past... Yeah, if they, maybe they had her more in the spirit world in this, and like her kind of, like, everything that she did in this one, like, even though you could so argue, like, well, yeah, obviously, be nice, whatever, but no, I feel that, like, when you are more nicer to your self-understanding of yeah. others and stuff like that, it does, it affects not only her environment, but everyone else. She went too. on like, an when actual she gets angry, everyone, journey. Yeah, when she gets angry, everyone else gets angry, too, and it spreads, and I like that. It does make me realize, it, and I'm like, maybe somehow they're gonna do something in this season or the next that will make me change my mind on this, but the more we're getting closer to getting to the end of, you know, this season or wherever they're going with this, the more I'm realizing that this was backwards. Season yeah. one should have come after season two or whatever they may be doing with season three. I'm not sure how it's working, you know, but it's like because she's building up this spiritual journey in this season, you know, we've had nothing of Aang this season, hardly anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, Aang was, we had flashbacks of Aang in the first one, she meets Aang at the end. I'm like, this should have been in reverse. They should have done this season first and then go to Amon because after you've had this spiritual journey and make all of these connections, how terrifying would it be to lose your avatar power? To feel like you've lost your connection to everything? And Well, to, to the show's credit, I think because she had such little emotional understanding in the first season, it was a greater... It, it was more terrifying for her to lose her power because it's like that was kind of her identity to her that's like all she had and, you know and after going through an emotional journey it's like well i can still live on after this i can you know i so guess so but forth. i feel like after all of that journeying in season one we just reverse ourselves back to a base zero again well, yeah no matter two, what they should like, have done that so i'm just like it feels like i feel like you could have started season one off with her at a higher avatar level and then the real threat is aman this guy can take away all bending sever your connection with your other avatar selves, you know, like, I would have rewritten him on so his power was even greater, so you can sever that spiritual connection or so, or at least the threat is there, like, you feel like this, it, I feel like it would have been a better build-up and something more scary after going through what is this season. Or why not what we said before, where her powers stay gone, imagine if her powers stay gone, and then we started this season. I mean, she could possibly still control spirits, but even what not if just Unalak, to go on the spiritual journey. What if Unalak was showing her how to get some of her avatar powers back by doing the spiritual bending? Yeah. That would have been a way better twist to get her to follow Unalak along, because if Tenzin can't show her how to do that, like, you know... And it, it give a reason why she's still frustrated, too, because she has to go through this emotional journey and the spirit world would help yeah. her back. I mean, it's just like, yeah! Well, point, point being, we are back on track now, and the show is really, really good again. But, yeah, I do feel like we just blew six episodes in the first yeah, half of the like, season getting here and I'm just like, I don't know what it was for, but yeah, like, I, I'm totally glad we're back on track because this episode was awesome. The previous episode was awesome. The one hour episode before that was awesome. It's just awesome now. If, yeah, I think the whole for whatever, six, seven episodes before you could have summed up in two or three. Yeah. You know, you, you did not need Well, we forget everybody's stuff. like, somebody was trying to tell me that the pilot, like, didn't have much going on. I was like, are you kidding? They I, I thought I great setup, so yeah. much plot in there that I thought, yeah, you could do that. Get two more episodes like that. And instead, we slowed to this crawl. Yeah, and, <laughs> like, and now it's really picking up again. Yeah. Uh, so I... 
yeah, I, I'm curious to see. I, I want, I want, I want to go back to the spirit world. We know, it, or at least we're gonna see it because what's her name still in there? The little Can girl. Can we go back and have another tea party? <laughs> with Iroh? Iroh? I want to see my Iroh. Iroh. That was so heartwarming. It just makes you feel so good. All right, so more tea. Oh, that was another thing too. He actually like he had tea like in his hand. He's like, oh, good thing I made tea. I, I, I actually, I actually made some yeah, tea. I just like, that. Sick, so. <laughs> yeah, just like give me that. Just like give me that. It's like you now have my coal. <laughs> I don't care. I, I fucking need tea during that scene because I was just like he, the way he talks about tea. I think I'm a tea drinker because of this guy. Because <laughs> I'm watching the first three seasons of Avatar, he just talks about so much. I'm like, you know what? This is really fucking good. <laughs> if you get the right one. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.